model of a Coelophysis dinosaur. Nobody's ever seen a real Coelophysis. In fact, nobody's ever seen any real dinosaur because they all became extinct long before we were around. So how do we know what dinosaurs actually look like? Well, people have found some clues to help them discover more, like these dinosaur bones, for instance. This one is part of a set of bones which must have belonged to rather a large dinosaur, don't you think? Now, if you found all the bones, you'll be able to make a whole skeleton. And here is one. It's called a Hypsilophodon, and as you can see, it was quite a small dinosaur. But we can tell by looking at its long legs that it could run very fast. <laughs> well, it probably had to, to get away from those bigger dinosaurs. And this is a much bigger dinosaur. Try and guess what it's called. Any ideas? It's a triceratops. Why? Because it's got three horns on its face. One, two, three. Oof, actually it's a pretty fierce looking creature, isn't it? Now the triceratops was a plant-eating dinosaur. And I think it would have taken an amazing amount of plants to fill this one up. Just look at the size of the skeleton. It's gigantic. I don't think this one's eaten a square meal for about 80 million years. Now, as you can see, it's got the most enormous rib cage. Now, these are its ribs. It's quite funny, really. Let me out! Help! <laughs> now, you... And I have got ribs as well. See if you can feel them just on the side there. <laughs> They're quite ticklish, really, ribs. I wonder if his are. <laughs> Go on, giggle. <laughs> Here's a human skeleton, and these are the ribs. I don't think he's very ticklish, though, do you? Inside your body, you have a skeleton just like this, with a skull, ribs, hips, legs, right down to the toes. In fact, altogether, there's a framework of over 200 different bones in your body. Just in one hand alone, there are 27 bones, and each finger has three. Have a look at this. Excuse me, George. Now, you don't count this bit because this is the palm. Here's the finger. One, two, three. But the thumb has two bones. One, two. The children have been having a look at bones too, and now they're making their own kinds of skeleton. here but not a whole skeleton. By looking at the bones of different creatures we can find out more about them. What have you got there Ben? The skull of a cat. Now cats are very good hunters and you can see that they've got long and pointed teeth for catching their food. And some dinosaurs had sharp teeth too for catching their prey. What dinosaur have you chosen to make Kaylee? Dinosaurs Rex. Oh really and you're making its jaw? Well, let's show everybody how it's made. 
Now you've made the jaw with two pieces of card and joined them together here with a brass pin. Now you had to be careful with this pin, didn't you? Because the ends are very sharp. And here's the string to open and close it. There you are. So, Kayla, do you want to just finish colouring colouring that in and then it'll all be completely finished, won't it? But if this was a real dinosaur jaw, it wouldn't be exactly like the bones we find today. It would be fossilised. I think Simon's found a very precious fossil. Indeed, I have. This is the fossil of a creature that lived at the same time as the dinosaurs. It's called Archaeopteryx. Now, fossils are the remains or traces of creatures that have been buried in the ground for millions of years and have gradually turned to stone. So what's so amazing about this fossil? Well, if you look, you can see the marks of feathers. The shape is quite clear. There's the wing. That's the wishbone, the body. There's one leg, and there's the other. And at the bottom of the other leg, those are claws. And running in between them is a long, bony tail. And again, the markings of feathers. So what's so amazing about an Archaeopteryx fossil? Well, it's got teeth and a bony tail, just like a reptile. But it's also got feathers and wings, and a wishbone. And what do they remind you of? A bird. And it's very possible that the Archaeopteryx was the very first bird. This is probably what it looked like. You'd be very lucky to find a fossil of a dinosaur or an Archaeopteryx, but some fossils are very easy to find, as I discovered when I went out with Tom Sharp and some children to a beach near Barry in South Wales. Can you see any fossils on that, that piece? That's a nice one. You see all those, those dark bits? That's right. And all those white bits? Those are all pieces of fossils. We're in the middle of a fossil hunt, because all over these rocks are hundreds of different sorts of fossils, of oysters and ammonites and all sorts of things. And when we found them, we're making a record of what they look like, what they are, and where we found them. So, Leah, what fossils have you seen today? The star stone, the flat oyster, the ribbed ammonite, and the smooth ammonite. The ribbed ammonite there. There's a nice one here as well, look. You can see the different shape. So we've seen lots of these ammonite fossils all day. Tom, you're a geologist. What's an ammonite and where do they come from? Ammonites belong to a group of animals that includes the octopuses and the cuttlefish. And they swam in the sea in this area. 200 million years ago. They lived at the same time as the dinosaurs and they became extinct at the same time as the dinosaurs. And I've got one along here to show you. Now this one is the ribbed ammonite and you can see almost the complete spiral of the shell. I'll pass that one and you can have a closer look at it so you can see the sort of things you've been drawing. Let me show you another one. This one is called the plagiostoma and you can see it's a bit better than some of the ones we've been finding today because it's got two parts of the shell preserved. And these uh, lived in the mud in the sea floor at the same time as the ammonites were swimming around. And that's a, that's a complete one, which is much, much better than any we've seen today. And you can even see the little lines around the edge. How old did you say this would be? How old? Yeah. About 200 million years. Cool. It's older than you, isn't it? Yeah. here is going to show us how a fossil might have been made. Just imagine that this sand was on the earth about 65 million years ago. Along came a dinosaur, dong, 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 but it died. Oh. Gradually its skin and flesh rotted away 
or was eaten by other animals until only its skeleton was left. Then the bones became covered in sand and mud. Just cover its head like this. Some little feet, big feet really. Like that. And we can see on this model over here that over the years the dinosaur got covered by more and more layers of mud and sand, which in turn got heavier and heavier and turned the dinosaur skeleton into rock. Now, if we remove these top layers, you can see that the dinosaur skeleton is still down there, only now it's been turned into a fossil. I know what you're wondering. How is it that we can find fossils of dinosaurs if they're buried so deep in the rock? Well, what happens is that when the Earth moves a little bit, the layers on the bottom move too. And then wind and rain wear away some of the rock until part of the skeleton is exposed and can be seen and found by somebody searching today. finding out how a group of children made that amazing animation later on in the series. Now you may not be lucky enough to find a whole fossilised dinosaur, but there are still plenty of other fossils to find, so keep your eyes open. You might find something as old as 65 million years. Or even 210 million years, because that's how old this piece of rock here is. How do we know? Have a look at this. This is a dinosaur's footprint. You can see the three claws there. And it belonged to a dinosaur called a Coelophysis, who walked along the sand just the same as Matthew, Leah, Anthony and David did earlier on. Come and have a look at this. The dinosaur's footprint. Quick! Can you see there it is? The three claws. And there's another one there, and another one there, and another one there. Let's find out where the 